So e-commerce SEO tip number one is to find the right keywords. Keywords are the foundation of every successful e-commerce SEO campaign, but here's the truth. Anyone can find keywords, but the real skill comes from knowing what keywords to actually target. And that's when knowing how to qualify and prioritize keywords comes into play. But let's start with some simple ways to find keywords in your industry. Number one, start with your website. Okay, so just open up Ahrefs and enter your domain and you're gonna to go to organic keywords. And then once you're in organic keywords, you're gonna see all of the keywords that you're currently ranking for. So the keywords that I highly recommend that you pay attention to are any that are ranking from position two to 15, because these are called low hanging fruits. And these are the best keywords to target right in the beginning, because if you just move some of these keywords from position eight and up, you're gonna see a huge increase in organic search traffic, especially for keywords that really matter, like the Sandblaster keyword, which I'm gonna be focusing on more in this video. Number two, steal ideas from your competitors. Okay, so what you wanna do is, while you're in Ahrefs, actually go to the organic competitor section. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna show you all of your organic search competitors. So these aren't necessarily competitors in the real world, but these are your competitors in Google. So what I like to do is I like to sort it by competitors keywords. So I look at the competitors that are ranking for more keywords than I am. And then I just take three of these competitors and I click on content gap over here and open up in a new tab. And I'm gonna pay all of these top three competitors into this tool and what it's gonna do is it's gonna show us the keywords that they're ranking for that we are not ranking for so then within seconds we have tons of keywords that we can go out and attack that our competitors are currently ranking for that we should also be trying to rank for as well so now that you've got a strong keyword list it's time to qualify these opportunities the first filtering mechanism is to use keyword difficulty start by filtering keywords by lowest DR to show keywords where low authority websites are ranking Start with 50 DR or lower. This is critical because KD doesn't consider overall site strength. That said, I recommend starting with a KD of less than 30. Then set a filter to only show keywords with a search volume greater than 100. The next question is, what keywords should you focus on within this group? The key to making that decision is 100% based on search intent. In short, you should prioritize keywords with transactional intent towards the bottom of the funnel. The best way to understand this is to know the five main categories of search intent, which are informational, investigative, comparison, transactional, and navigational. Every strong SEO campaign will target keywords at each stage of the sales funnel. So let's say you're building a keyword strategy for an e-commerce website that sells sandblasters. So at the top of the funnel, they would want to target keywords with informational intent, like how does a sandblaster work or soda blasting versus sandblasting. And targeting informational keywords is perfect for driving traffic and brand awareness while building top authority. The next phase of the searcher journey is to target keywords with investigative intent, like best sandblaster. Now, at this point, the searcher is likely brand aware, which means they'll likely search keywords with comparison intent, like Leilamatic versus Nico Sandblaster. As you can tell, the searcher is getting very close to making a decision and they're weighing their options. And now we've arrived at keywords with transactional intent, which in this case would be Nico Sandblaster coupon code. The conversion rate for these types of keywords is absolutely sky high. So with that said, you should always start at the bottom of the sales funnel and work your way up. Prioritize keywords with transactional intent and build your entire strategy to support those bottom of the funnel keywords. Now it's time for e-commerce SEO tip number two, which is conduct a technical SEO audit. First, you'll need to download Screaming Frog SEO Spider. This tool will crawl your website and find every possible technical SEO opportunity. Second, once you've downloaded Screaming Frog, you need to integrate Google Analytics, Google Search Console, and the Ahrefs APIs. Here's how. Okay, so all you need to do is over here in the API section, just go to Google Analytics 4 and connect your API. Go to Google Search Console, connect the API. I would also recommend doing PageSpeed Insights to connect as well. And then lastly, use Ahrefs to connect. So basically what we've done is we're gonna be able to see our current traffic from Google Analytics. In Google Search Console, we're gonna be able to see clicks and impressions. And with PageSpeed Insights, we're gonna be able to see the core web vitals for every single page. And then lastly, we're gonna be able to see the backlinks for every single page. This is critical for being able to understand the performance of every single page on your website. Once the crawl is complete, I recommend exporting the report and adding it to a Google Sheet. Now, I could dedicate hours to this audit process, but here are three opportunities to look for. Number one, poor SEO performance. Okay, so now you should have all of this data from 
using Screaming Frog. And what you wanna do is you wanna find pages that have zero sessions, zero clicks, hopefully zero impressions, and zero backlinks, okay? So we wanna really have all of these columns, all with big goose eggs, big zeros, okay? Because any page that has really poor metrics like that across the board, it's really an indication that something needs to happen with that page. Either A, the page needs to be upgraded, B, the page needs to be optimized, C, maybe it needs more topic authority, maybe it needs more internal linking, or number four, maybe it just doesn't have enough links, right? And so there, there's a lot of cases where you just need to ultimately improve that page. So whenever I see a page that's not performing well, there's really only gonna be a few different actions for me. Number one, I'm gonna ask, does this page need to exist, okay? And if it doesn't need to exist, then I'm just gonna delete it and let it 404. Number two, if it does need to exist and it is targeting a keyword, but it just has not done well, then I wanna probably rebuild that page upgrade it, optimize it, come with a new angle and just make it a substantially better page and then go out there and start acquiring backlinks to that page to actually see if we can get it to rank. So there's really not a whole lot of options and there's also the other option too, which is just take that page and 301 redirect it to an existing page. I only typically recommend that in two scenarios. One is with keyword cannibalization, which I'm gonna be talking about in a second. And number two is if it has backlinks, okay? So like if we wanted to, 301 redirect this URL here and has backlinks. Okay, that's a good idea. But we wanna make sure we find an apples to apples comparison. Like if it's a if it's a post about backlinks, I want it to 301 redirect to another post about backlinks. Okay, we wanna make sure that it's that redirect is very clean. Use this data to your advantage to identify poor performing assets and then start to take the necessary steps to improve those pages. Number two, internal linking opportunities. Okay, so now we wanna look for internal linking opportunities. And so internal links are critical for improving crawling, improving indexing, and most importantly, sending link equity to important pages on your site. So what you wanna do is when you have this export, this export from Screaming Frog, we're just gonna scroll over and we're gonna look specifically for internal linking opportunities. So we're gonna scroll over until we see crawl depth. Okay, I'm gonna highlight this so you can see it. But crawl depth is critical. This means how many clicks does it take to get to these pages, okay? And the deeper your pages are into the architecture, the harder it is for Google to crawl and index those pages. So as a general rule of thumb, we want every page on our site to be no more than three clicks deep, okay? So all of these, these URLs here would be candidates to figure out why are they so deep in the architecture? And then ultimately what we can do to push them further up into the architecture. So that's the first one we wanna look at there. The second one is unique inlinks. This one's really important. And what this means is how many internal links are going to these pages. So we see there's a lot, a lot of pages that have no internal links at all, okay? So if we go down here, there's just tons and tons and tons of internal links that are missing, okay? So all of these pages, once again, are candidates to try to figure out why do these pages not have internal links. Sometimes it's just a total neglect, right? You just didn't actually go through and add internal links. Other times it can be a symptom of poor topic authority, right? And so if you see that there are a lot of pages that don't have internal links, typically it means we need to create more assets so that we can actually build internal links among pages. So you look at these two here because these are critical and this will greatly improve your SEO performance if you clean this up and most importantly, get to the bottom of why these pages don't have internal links and then just start working to increase the amount of internal links to the pages that actually matter. And if there's no available pages, well then we know what to do next, which is we need to create more content. And number three, keyword cannibalization. Okay, so keyword cannibalization occurs when two or more pages are targeting the same exact keyword. And so what I like to do to be able to find that is I always like to start in this title section. So I'll go up here and I'll go to filter by condition and then I'll do text contains and I'll just enter something that I think could be causing cannibalization. So in this case, we'll just do sand. And so what I wanna do is I wanna see all the pages that currently have that keyword that we're trying to go after. So we wanna rank for sandblasters and we want this page to rank for sandblasters. But what I'm seeing here is we have multiple product pages that also have Sandblaster in them. So we're gonna to try to figure out, is this the right, the right strategy here? Or are these product pages, the way that they're currently optimized, is it going to compete for, against our primary keyword? And so this is something that you're gonna to have to figure out, but ultimately in, in most cases, the best practice, we want 
one primary keyword per page. So I only want to target sandblasters and sandblaster on one page on my website. Okay. And more importantly, looking at these, these are really the same exact product with just a different SKU. So this is something that you're gonna to try to figure out, but ultimately I don't think this is a huge problem. I'd be more concerned if I saw another page that was about sandblasters, okay, broadly. But in this case, it's probably not gonna cause a whole lot of problems. But once again, I'm more concerned if I saw another page with sandblasters, that would be a clear sign of keyword cannibalization. And if we did find that, then we would just need to consolidate those assets together to eliminate that issue for good. So now that you've identified some high impact technical SEO opportunities, it's time to move on to e-commerce SEO tip number three, which is optimize existing SEO content. You know that I recommend targeting low hanging fruits first, which are keywords ranking from positions two to 15. You'll need to examine these pages to see how to make them better. My process for optimizing existing content is simple. Okay, I'm inside Surfer and I went to SERP Analyzer and then entered Sandblasters, which is the keyword go we're going after. And then I went down here and entered the target URL, okay? And what you wanna do is click on these little three dots and we're gonna go to Audit. And what I wanna see is, is this page optimized well for the primary keyword? But before you even look at the NLP related keywords, it's much better to actually go down here and look at the word count. I just want to see, does this page have enough words to actually compete here? And in this case, I'd say it does not. It needs to have more words. It doesn't necessarily need, you know, 2,400 words here, but at least you want to try to get in this range here, which is, you know, between 1,000 and 2,800 words. And right now it's at about 112. So there's a lot of room to improve just on pure word count alone, not, not even considering the type of copy that we put there. So we need to narrow that gap. And then once that gap is narrowed, then we need to start looking at these keywords and figuring out how we're gonna put these into the content. So what you actually should do is you take these keywords and you put this into your content brief, right? All of these keywords you can actually use in the content brief and then you build the content based on all of these ideas. But this is how you optimize upfront instead of having to create the content and then go back and try to inject these keywords. That's much more difficult. So just do it upfront and then you'll have less work on the optimization side. So since the word count is so low, I wanna quickly show you how I would improve this page. So if it's actually very simple, you could of course go and get a writer and write content for you, but I'd actually recommend in this case, you could probably just use ChatGPT to be honest. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these keywords and I'm gonna put this into ChatGPT using a very basic prompt. So take a look at this prompt here. You can see it's very simple. We're just gonna create an e-commerce page targeting sandblasters, make sure you mention the company and then make sure to talk about the NLP keywords and the target word count. So I put these in here. This is, I didn't do anything more. This is all I did. I just put this in here and ChatGPT within a few seconds created a very decent piece of content for us that we could easily put on this category page with some modifications and some edits. This is, think of this as just your first draft, right? You're gonna, this is your first draft and you're gonna go through, you're gonna clean it up, you're gonna make it relevant to you, you're gonna personalize it, you're gonna add testimonials, maybe some bottom of the funnel content, whatever it is to make it unique to the brand. But this is just the starting point and within seconds we have a nice base to work from. So I copied this and I put it into Surfer's content editor. And all I did here, this is without any edits, not a single edit here, okay? But I just put some, some basic headings and already up to a 65, okay? Already up to a 65. So what I would do from here is once again, I'd actually probably go back to ChatGPT because based on the word count here, and I would try to make increase the depth on some of these sections. Then once I've hit the proper word count, then I would run this through Grammarly, and then most importantly, I would run my, my own human process in here. So I'd actually go through and try to add some personalized things in here, make it more human, uh, and ultimately add more stuff that's relevant to the brand, okay? So yeah, there's still work that you have to do, but the hardest part is actually over, which is actually writing the content, which is the biggest, the biggest hurdle to improving these pages. So we're talking about in just in a few minutes, we could immediately make this page better. We could immediately improve performance just using AI. Okay, so I showed you how you can actually create that category page content with ChatGPT and Surfer. But I also wanted to give you the alternative, which is you can actually use Surfer's AI to create this content on 
really completely automatically for you. So you just give Surfer AI the keyword you want to rank for, and then it's going to naturally do all of this work for you. So instead of you having to go to chat GPT and enter the NLP keywords and analyze competitors, what this does is it actually goes, and you can go here and see, it goes and analyzes the top five competitors that are ranking on the first page, okay? And it picks the ones that have the highest score, okay? So whichever ones have the highest surfer score, it goes in here, the highest content score, and it uses those as its as its seeds for creating this content. And so if we go back here, you'll see that with, with just, I think this was about 28 bucks to deliver this one article, you get a completely fully done article, headings and everything, and it's already optimized as well. So, and it gets up to a 95 just out of the gate. This is without any edits. This is what, without adding anything unique to this page. So pretty crazy, right? Pretty crazy. So I'll have a link in the description so you can sign up for Surfer AI. But the point is, you don't need to use this. You don't have to use this, but it does just make things a lot easier. But most importantly, don't just create this content with Surfer AI or ChatGPT or any automated tool and then just slap it on your site. Actually have an editorial process in place. Just treat this like it's a writer. This is a writer and it needs to go through the same editorial process that a regular writer would go through. This is just a first draft, a first draft. We wanna, we wanna do a second draft and possibly a third draft. So that way the content is unique, it's human, and ultimately it's not just cookie cutter, okay? So take advantage of these tools to streamline your SEO content creation efforts. So now you must go through your existing pages and upgrade and optimize them just one at a time. And make sure you update your posting every time you make substantial changes. And once you've gone through your existing assets, it's time to, number four, splinter your content. So if your website is currently ranking for any keywords, you're sitting on an SEO gold mine. Here's what you need to do. Open up Ahrefs, enter your domain, go to organic research, click on positions, click the positions dropdown, and select select 51 through 100. I call this set of keywords clustering opportunities. In short, you'll likely have a page ranking for keywords that will never be able to rank number one in Google because it isn't hyper-focused enough. And that's when splintering your content comes into play. For example, this e-com business selling sandblasters ranks number 50 for where to buy sandblasting media with a product page that isn't 100% relevant to the query. So what I would do is create a dedicated page for where to buy sandblasting media and then internally link these pages together. I've tested this thousands of times at this point and the splintered content outperforms the original page nine out of 10 times. And now it's time to move on to e-commerce SEO tip number five, which is optimize for Google's EEAT. This is particularly important if you're in a YMYL or your money, your life industry like health or finance. But the truth is, I go through this process for every site I'm trying to rank. So first, what is Google EEAT? It stands for Experience, Expertise, Authoritativeness, and Trustworthiness. And here are three examples to model. Okay, so here is a perfect example of how you should go about optimizing for experience in Google's EEAT guidelines. So you scroll down here and what you wanna see is whenever you're looking at product reviews or you're just looking really at any content, you want to make sure you're injecting firsthand experience. So what you could tell from this post is that they actually went and they actually taste tested all of these pizzas. And so very, very obvious here that they actually went through and actually did had, had real firsthand experience with these products. So if you're creating product reviews or you're even talking about anything in an informational nature, always bring up real life firsthand experience with whatever you're talking about. It's really important. So in the case of a website that's talking about sandblasters and we're, we're creating content about sandblasters, what you wanna do is you wanna bring in our firsthand experience about the particular topic that we're currently creating content on. That's all there is to it. Don't overcomplicate this. Just bring in your real life experience and just avoid being generic. Don't be afraid to, to actually have an opinion. It's really important because it, it adds depth to your content. Most importantly, it shows Google that your content's not just some regurgitated nonsense, it's actually legit. And then to take this to the next level, to also optimize for expertise, you should model WebMD. Just look at what they're doing and just model it to a T. And you can tell they have a lot of things. Right above the fold, you can tell that this content is written by a subject matter expert, okay? So right away, this needs to be really, really clear. And no matter what industry you're in, you should do this. 
always have your content written or fact-checked by subject matter expert and put it above the fold. And then when you look through this content, you see lots of links going to other related topics and you're probably also gonna see citations here at the bottom. So right here, you're gonna see the sources where they actually got this content. And so really across the board, this content is very high quality and very trusted. And that is the goal of any content that you're creating on your website. And now it's time for e-commerce SEO tip number six, which is to use the reverse silo technique. In short, most of your backlinks should hit linkable assets, and then you drive the link equity to other critical pages using internal linking. You just have to remember that a rising tide lifts all ships. That means that if you drive backlinks to one page, it'll improve the overall site authority, which improves the performance of other pages. Here's an example. Okay, so what you're looking at here is a page that Candy Funhouse created for this position that they, a really unique position in their company to actually become a candy officer, the chief candy officer, which is really just someone who tastes candy. And I don't even know if this is a real position, but regardless, it was a good marketing play. And as a result, they attracted a ton of backlinks going to this specific page. And if you look at this, you look at the link chart here, they have, they've acquired so many backlinks to this page. And yeah, the traffic isn't great, but that's not the purpose of this page. The purpose of this is that backlinks were driven to this page. They got an extra 480 referring domains. And remember what I said, a, a rising tide lifts all ships. So by driving links to this specific page, if we look at the overall performance of the site now, you're gonna see the outcome, right? Look at the performance of this site now that they just drove links to one single page. It lifted the entire website. So that's why you don't need to think about building overall site authority. You can think about building overall site authority one page at a time. And I've done this on so many websites where we just focused in on one page and just drove really high quality links to a page that really deserved links. And it just lifted the organic traffic for the entire website. So do not underestimate this. And now e-commerce SEO tip number seven is to acquire high quality relevant backlinks. So going back to the idea of the reverse silo, you need to create linkable assets. That means you need pages that people would actually wanna to link to. Very rarely are category or product pages linkable. So most of your links should be going to your homepage and high quality content. Here are a few examples. Number one, create ultimate guides. Creating the most comprehensive guide on a topic works really well in industries where it's not overplayed. For example, if you try to create the ultimate guide on backlinks in the SEO industry, it will likely fail because it's so overplayed. However, if you did the history of sandblasting, you'll likely strike gold because no one else is really doing it. Number two, create data-driven content. We created a case study with unique data analyzing the top CMSs for SEO, and it now has countless backlinks from authority websites. Once again, we didn't do aggressive link acquisition. I just created a unique asset that no one else has created. Number three, create free tools and software. This used to be very difficult to do before, but now you can use ChatGPT to create awesome free tools that function perfectly as link bait. Here's how. Okay, so ChatGPT has made the process of creating link bait so much easier. And so my go-to recommendation right now is to really use it to create free tools and software. So what you can tell here is I gave it a very simple prompt just to see what it would come up with. And it came up with some decent ideas, but this isn't exactly what I was looking for. Now, you could of course pursue a lot of these ideas. They're they're definitely good and worth pursuing a little bit further, but I wanted something a little more specific to a company that sells sandblasters. So I went up here and I said, what are some free tools we can create? And then it came up with a bunch of really unique ideas. So then I just followed it up with one that I actually like. So I took the sandblasting time estimator and I told it to create HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And so what it does is it will immediately start writing that code for you. And this code is not gonna be perfect, by the way. You're gonna to need to put it into your, into the website, make sure that it works, and when, when there's certain errors with it, you're gonna to need to come back to ChatGPT to ask it to fix it. And it's really amazing. You can just go back and forth and treat this like this is a developer that's on your team and you're just going back and forth until it gets right. And so what I did is I, you can take this and then go into WordPress, download the WP Coder plugin, and then once you have it, all you can do is you go right here into the HTML code, you put that in, put in the CSS code, and then put in the JavaScript, okay? And then you just go ahead and take the short code, put it into the actual page that you're creating, 
And at the end of this, you're gonna have a fully functioning tool that you can use for link building purposes. And so now you have something that's actually worth linking to, and you did it without having to be a coder, right? And I'll be honest, like I do understand a little bit of code, so I was able to build this out, you know, based on the the issues I was encountering, but I just kept going right back to ChatGPT and asking questions. And there were sometimes some things I didn't even know the answer to, and I would go back here and it would tell me the answer, right? So really, really awesome. And there's just so many ways to build free linkable assets now. There's just no reason to not use ChatGPT for this because it really streamlines this process. And now you have a fully functioning piece of link bait that you can promote and start getting backlinks. So that's how you do e-commerce SEO. If you want access to my proprietary e-commerce SEO systems, templates, and SOPs, then go to gotchaseo.com slash ecom to apply for our new e-commerce SEO certification program. Thank you so much for watching.